hello, 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 and welcome to the CRM Zen Show, where we talk about all things Zoho. This is episode 310 for July 5th, 2024. The text awakens. From Zenata Consulting, I'm Brett Martin. And I'm Tyler Colt, and let's get right on into the show. All righty. We have got a big show today. Um, lots of news. I think this is probably, I think, more not in shows on this document because there was just so much news we kind of had to thin down. So be sure you subscribe to our newsletter so you get all the news, even the stuff we can't cover on the show. Um, I know that we're saying this is for July 5th, but uh, we're actually recording this on July 3rd because we had a nice long holiday weekend coming up. Any good plans for the 4th? Do a little bit of nothing. I don't know. Yeah, nothing nothing crazy on our side with the house. We're in the process of buying a house. Got a trip coming up the following week. We'll probably just use the time to relax a little bit. Very nice. Very nice. I am jumping on a plane, heading back to California for a couple days. So get out of the 117 degree heat here in Las Vegas. Makes and sense. Yeah. Where it's a little bit better. All right. Well, with that, um, are we going to run an ad? I guess we'll run an ad and then get right on into the news. Junk data can clog up your CRM, making it harder to focus on the records that matter. Next thing you know, you've got a mountain of records to soar through and you're not even sure where to start. This is why we created the Zanata Health Check for Zoho CRM. This extension reads your Zoho CRM's users, leads, deals, accounts, contacts, and tasks data and provides you with a monthly summary straight to your inbox of some of the key indicators of data quality for these core modules. With the Zanata Health Check, you'll get notified in your monthly report whether or not you have unused Zoho CRM licenses, or if you have contacts missing email addresses, or accounts with no associated contacts. In addition, you'll get links to helpful videos and blogs from the Zanata Resource Library showing you how you can clean up your system and keep it clean. We also include buttons on each of the core modules that let you generate your health check report whenever you need it. The Zanata Health Check for Zoho CRM. A clean system is a better system. Download today on the Zoho Marketplace. All righty, Tyler. Did Greg say light? Library on there, by the way. I think I think so. That's the library instead of library. I think he said library. I'm gonna have to. We're gonna have to play that back a little bit. That's a demerit. But remember, it. Mm-hmm, it is. But a clean system is a good system, or something like that. I don't know. It's good. Check out the health check app today. Lots of improvements coming to that. All right. Well, Tyler, the CRM. You can now assign records uh, based on user roles in the organization, which is. Kind of nice. Um, for some reason, I thought you could already do this, but I guess, did we just handle this by scripting in the past or? Yeah, pretty much pretty much by scripting. And, and these really seem to apply primarily in the context of assignment rules inside of CRM. So not everybody uses those. Some people just use workflows to handle this. Um, but essentially what it looks like it's going to do is write in based on some criteria, right? So the example they give is like, uh, you know, a record that is in Canada is going to be assigned to a particular role of users. Um, What I'm assuming though, like this isn't where anybody in that role is going to have access to it. I would have to guess they're going to essentially round robin it within that role. Um, They do already have some round robin functionality inside of assignment rules. So um, to be clear, yeah, this isn't like group ownership this is particularly okay. within the assignment rules themselves, um, where it doesn't explicitly say it, but I would have to imagine it's doing a round robin. Otherwise, this would be a totally different update. They would now say like record right. owners can be roles, right? Rather than particular people. Um, so yeah, I would assume we're looking at a round robin. It is nice though. Like a common thing that we do is set up scripts that based on a criteria, round robin in a role. Um, so being able to do that natively just means like one less script you have to write, which is, uh, always a a win for the end user. Very nice. All right. Moving on with the news. Um, Zoho has their own SMS gateway inside of marketing automation now. So, um, I've not played with it, but marketing automation is just that Zoho's marketing automation tool. Um, it's not to be confused with Zoho campaigns, even though they're similar. We talk about this a lot, but marketing automation yep. has been recently re-released. Um, 
And so there's a whole lot going on with it. So it, instead of having to use a third party gateway, a Twilio gateway or some other third parties, basically Zoho has their own gateway feature, which is now um, available in Canada, India, and the U.S., um, it's really interesting. It says for other countries, we will continue to offer integrations with third party services. So I'm wondering if you it's can no longer use, yeah. like if you are using a third party SMS gateway, if you can't do that anymore, which I don't think would make a lot of people happy. Um, no. if that's the case, um, well, but it's, it's one of those the, things where they, I do appreciate that they're doing this and I understand yes. that not everybody who has marketing automation is going to have many different Zoho apps. I would say most do, I think in specifically the marketing tools, basically everybody who's using this is probably using Zoho CRM. Um, they are just making this more confusing, right? Which is my only concern is, you know, cause you got Zoho voice, right? Yep. And that can do SMS and it can do telephony. And then in the CRM, you have Zoho telephony, which is not Zoho voice. That is a unique offering inside of CRM that does voice and SMS. And now you have another SMS tool over here inside of marketing automation. The challenge for me is like what I find with users, the most common thing they want to do when it comes to SMS is each salesperson has their phone number and they're doing those texting. They're kind of doing prospecting messages out of CRM. Maybe someone fills yep. out a form, I shoot them a text, then they never get back to me. And now I want to put them into some type of drip marketing that'll include SMS. But I want that to come from the same number, right? Because right. when they respond, I wanted to get back in front of that salesperson that was originally kind of assigned to work this lead. And this makes that more complicated, right? Because this would be a separate number um, I would love to just see them go all in on Zoho Voice, just being the back end for all of these apps as kind of the the most tightly integrated telephony solution. Um, because it just my concern here is you just don't want different numbers and different apps, right? That's not what most people are going to prefer. Um, in the long run, I think a lot of outbound SMS marketing is going to have to happen via short code phone numbers, anyways. That legislation, and it's going to come. It's already happening in Europe. It'll probably come here in the next five or 10 years. So um, I guess they'll be primed for that if they're going to offer short codes through this. But yeah, it is just one of those tricky things where I do like it. I like that they have this native tool. But for people who are using many Zoho apps, it's just becoming a little bit more complicated in terms of like what service do I actually use to do my texting in desk, CRM, and my marketing ideally yeah. from the same numbers is really, I think what most people prefer. And it's, it's getting murkier in terms of how you're really going to do that. It is. And uh, I will tell us, be very, very, very careful um, when basically implementing SMS in a marketing automation platform. Um, the laws in the United States on it are ridiculous. Um, and just sending an errant text to somebody is you're, you're breaking the law if they've opted out, except the only people this doesn't apply to is politicians. So, which I think is hysterical, but to be very careful when sending these out, you want to make sure people are opted in. And if they opt out, they need to be opted out. Um, you can't send them anything after that. So uh, it can cause big, big problems. But I agree with you, Tyler. Um, some sort of, you know, when you talk about everything's being standardized around Zoho voice, I think that this it's, it's got to occur. They've got to get it together. You know, it's, it's also yeah. the same thing. They have to get campaigns and marketing automation standardized as to one product. Um, there's just too much confusion around this. I don't know where we stand on marketing automation now. I know we were close to making the transition, but there are there still some Zoho one or still some, my, believe it or not, it's, migration issues? Like migration Is that what we're challenges. Like we were going to pull the trigger and then um, someone over on Club Zanata, the forum that we run, uh, sign up at club.zanata.com. Um, someone actually posted, not an employee of ours, just a Zoho user that contributes over there, kind of detailing their woes in moving over from campaigns to marketing automation. It was about a month and a half ago, I think they yep. wrote that up. And so we paused. I think we were actually going to try it out ourselves and they were like, don't, um, don't do it yet. So I think the word right now is still pause, right? Be ready for it, but no need to pull that trigger. I will also highlight with this uh, SMS gateway, they already have this in campaigns. So this is actually one of those weird opposite cases where something had originally come to campaigns and is now getting yep. copied in marketing automation. So 
yeah, I would say stick with campaigns for now. All right, with that, let's move right on with the news. Zoho Sign product update. So this is a recap article. I thought it was worth putting in. Uh, basically, it's everything that's happened over the last six months with Zoho Sign. And we uh, there was just one thing in here that we touched on. We talked about it. But the whole custom roles and profiles thing, um, I kind of wanted to lift this in so I could talk with you a little bit about it. How are we finding? that? Are we liking it now? The new I mean, it's fine. There, there's like a couple. These are really specific uh, criticism that I have around it where like it does require like a lot of putting users in into particular groups that you can't do when you initially onboard them from like a yeah. Zoho one perspective but they're more than flexible enough where yes it's a little annoying when you onboard someone you got to go in and just put them in the right categories and sign so like you onboard them to one you put them in their designation that adds them to most apps and then you do one more thing and sign not really that big of a deal, but they're more than flexible enough now where you can make like multi-tier hierarchical sharing and, you know, exclusions or like kind of custom unique sharing rules that are outside of the hierarchy. Like it's it's more than flexible enough, I would say, for most people to get the permissions that they want now. It just isn't super elegant in like how you onboard new people into it. Very nice. But that's the big one. They've got some new API capabilities for embedding Zoho Sign. Um, they've increased some security around webhooks. Uh, so a lot of interesting stuff. So what's coming, I thought was interesting, conditional fields, formula fields, um, e-witness. That's a big one yeah. that, uh, other, others kind of do. Um, check, check box grouping, grouping, depending on exactly what they mean by that, that actually might be a really nice update. Um, Zoho sign when you're creating a document via APIs it's a little prickly about how you need to fill in like radio fields, but check boxes are a lot easier. So I'm wondering if they're basically going to let you do like check boxes that are grouped, meaning like you pick one out of these five, which basically makes it like a radio button, but easier in the API. So again, kind of a nerdy one, but I think that will be a nice update when they roll that out. Cause it's kind of like, if you send someone like a W nine, it's like, or a W two, you're not supposed to be more than one type of entity. But if you had a checkbox on each of them, hypothetically, they could pick two, right? And it's like, well, you're not an LLC and an S Corp, right? Like you can't be both. Um, so those types of things will be nice with checkboxes. Actually, you can be both. It's kind of weird. But yeah, bad example. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And moving on, on the world of sign, and just for the heck of it, evidently a couple of days ago, I guess uh, four or five days ago, uh, was National eSign Day. Everybody needs a national day. What I thought was interesting about this article is it was 24 years ago that it was made illegal, that it was made legal. Um, it just seems like it's been around a lot longer, you know? Yeah. But uh, so basically in the year 2000 is when you could legally sign a document electronically. That's pretty, uh, pretty crazy. Um, anyway, nice job. And I think there's an error in this. So I was just pointing out, it says you pride yourself that you now have 40,000 plus businesses across the globe using it. I think because of zero or two missing there. So we've got 125 yeah. million users and way more than 40,000 plus businesses. But anyway, uh, happy national East side day, by the way, if you ever want to get your own day, there's an organization for it and they charge you anybody. You can do any day you want, really, but you have, you have to pay them a fee. Yes. Yes. <laughs> But uh, there's got there should, we should start a competing organization, you know. There you go. Yeah, real National Day, you know, and uh, charge half their prices, like five grand, something like that. It's crazy. Anyway, moving right along. Um, in Zoho Writer, you now can add watermarks to your documents. You could kind of do this. You kind of take an image. You can make it behind the text. There. Yeah. You could fade it back. But this is an official watermark tool that exists yeah. inside a Zoho Writer. That's all it is. So if you want to do something pretty, make some nice little watermarks on the back of your document, um, knock yourself out. I would say like a nice one here is like we will have clients who will send someone kind of like an example proposal before they yep. go and they do the full technical scoping process. So adding to that template some watermark that's like, this is not the official proposal, right? That kind of like repeats in a certain area. I could yep. see the use case for that. 
Um, and yeah, there's always been a way to do it, but it's been funky. So just having like a native way to manage watermarking is, um, again, a lot of people go, I don't need this. That's totally fine. But I'm sure someone out there is super excited because uh, if it's part of your workflow, it's now just handled uh, a lot easier. I look good. I mean, it looks nice too sometimes. So I see companies' logos faded back there. I mean, it's a nice way of doing things. So um, you got watermarks. There it is. I always thought that was already there, but now it officially is. So go get yourself uh, some Zoho Writer. Groove on. Um, also in Zoho Writer, uh, they are changing the way that uh, you are inserting images from URLs. It used to be that every single time you opened the document, it was fetching the image again from the embedded URL. It's not doing that. It's fetching it the first time and it's storing it locally in the document now. So, so this is nice oh, for load speed, but yeah. not great for things that change, right? Like a lot of the times what we'll tell a client is like, make sure to do your images as a reference URL so that if they change, it'll be updated in the document right away. Um, right. Looks like that would not happen now. So you would need to go in and actually change the URL merge to get it to kind of like refresh um, that image. But it's not going to affect documents that were created before June 5th. Okay. 2024. So if you created your document a month ago, you're okay. Yeah. <laughs> Those are good. But going forward, I guess it's going to do this. So um, there you go. Moving it right along. Uh, uh, duh, duh. Oh, wrapping up the news. Um, if you are a user of Zoho's Marketing Plus suite um, or Marketing Plus, which is a own separate suite, different than yeah it's funny it has a lot of the stuff that's in zoho one but it is completely different because it's got a whole yeah, different dashboard and it's it, kind of like it's crm agency. plus but minus crm and analytics yes. and plus this special thing called brand studio which yes. is unique to marketing plus and not offered in zoho one right right and so uh in Brand Studio now, you now get a brand calendar. So you have a unified display of all of your marketing activities across all of your different brands and everything you're working on and all of your clients. Um, so very nice. Yep. So and do you just know, so again, just to, this is not going to be supported in Zoho One. So you do not get the brand calendar there as of right now. Um, right. I'll tell you, <laughs> bundles, man. They get so tricky with the bundles. I oftentimes on sales calls will have to pull up our website and go to the bundles section just to like remind myself what exactly is in each of these because there's so many and they're so diversified at this point. This is basically for agencies. So if yeah. you are a marketing agency and you are handling social media and all kinds of other things for a bunch of different clients, this is the application for you. Um it actually is exceptionally um, well priced, considering all it does for an agency. You could run an entire marketing agency on this on this bundle, uh, have CRM on the side, which you would need. <laughs> but other than that, uh, very good. So, and with that, Tyler, uh, I guess uh, let's go take a look at our implementation of the week. All right, so implementation of the week for this week is all centered around CRM and Click, two applications we use all the time. This is built out by uh, George and JP on the Zanata team. Um, and this is essentially a different spin on a Click integration for CRM. Um, a lot of people know there is the default integration where when things happen on a workflow basis, you can essentially send messages to channels. Like we use this internally whenever a new deal closes or we renew somebody, it just posts to a channel. Um, in this case, though, the client's using the deals module to manage like very long term and high touch sales opportunities. Like it's not rare for them to be like working a deal for like six, seven, eight, nine months before it closes. And then when it closes, it's like a two year engagement. Right. So these are like long term opportunities where rather than notifying a unified channel where all the deal notifications are going to go. In this case, it actually made more sense to create a channel for each one of these deals because they're not working like 50 deals at a time. It's like they can only be working a small handful because they're super, super in-depth 
a lot of documentation, a lot of 3D mapping, a lot of this side or the other that goes into winning or losing a deal for them. So really, rather than having that unified channel where all these notifications are going, we set up a workflow and function inside of the CRM where whenever a deal is created, um, the creation of the deal for them has a lot of requirements. You can't just like willy nilly create one. Uh, It's a very strictly defined CRM. Um, It'll actually create a new channel uh, for that deal the moment that it has been created. Um, We can set the name of that channel based on info about that deal and about the account. Again, We want to have a strict process, make it easy to search these, right? So you can easily and click search the account. It'll pull down um, any of the click channels for deals that are open for them. Um, And then the next step, essentially what we're working on next is based on some of the parameters of that deal, we're going to auto include specific people or teams into that new click channel. So example might be as like a simple one. Let's say we had a field in the deal that says, This is a deal that needs AutoCAD designs or does not need AutoCAD designs. Well, if it's yes, we should add someone from that team into this channel so that they'll be able to easily communicate about where they're at in their process um, for this particular deal or opportunity. So I just kind of like this one as I was kind of reviewing some of the work we did recently. Like it's not the most crazy complicated script, right? It's interestingly like the, the complicated part will come in now as we're going to kind of write some logic to pick and associate users. Um, but I thought I would just kind of highlight this because it's it's kind of how the projects integration with Click wants to work because it has the project bot for some of the unified stuff. But what it really wants to do is create a channel for each project, assuming that these are like longer term Gantt char water flow type projects where you need that dedicated space to communicate. Um, and I just thought this was kind of an interesting approach for these deals that really like the sales process of this deal is like its own Gantt chart, right? Like it's not just a couple quick calls. We write something up. It's like, we need a government approval. We got to fit into the quarterly budget cycle. We got to do this. We got to do that. Like you're not closing one of these in two or three weeks. It's just never going to happen. And so having this kind of dedicated space uh, should be really useful for the client just to manage all of the internal back and forth related to this opportunity. Very cool. There's so much that can be done with click. Um, And it just, uh, Oh yeah. Very, very powerful tool. So very, very nice job. All yeah. right. Future things you could do with this too is like think about with like click forms and pop-ups. If the deal got to a certain stage, it could like submit a form in that channel that someone needs to fill out as an up. You know, there's just a lot of now like future things we can do now that we have that dedicated space um for that deal. Very cool. Very cool. All right, let's head over to Club Zanata and check out our code share of the week. This will probably be a very popular code share. Um, We get asked this a lot. Oftentimes when people are moving to Zoho, uh, they might move to projects, desks, CRM, they're doing all that, but they're not leaving QuickBooks online. They're, they're, that's not never, never, never going to happen. So we do a lot of work where we're doing some integrations back and forth with QuickBooks for them. And this is one where you can relate uh, a project to an estimate in QuickBooks. So uh, basically- And this, the one thing that- I think is useful to know for this one is if people are looking to do this yourself is two things. One, like QuickBooks. Yeah, it's an enterprise player. It's a big player in the space. Their API, the more we're interacting with it is a bit buggy. So just make sure that you are testing every different edge case. We had one recently where we tried to create a customer and it was like, no, a customer already exists with this email address. Okay. So we went to search for the customer and it's like, no customer exists with that email address. So just in this one case, we pushed over like a 900, you know, a thousand customers. All of them went over fine. And one of them both exists and doesn't exist in the API at the say it's Schrodinger's customer. It's like depends on how you look for it. <laughs> um, and the second thing specific to this build out is inside of Zoho Books, you have customers and then you have projects and a project is a separate thing from a customer. In QuickBooks, right. a project is just a customer. So each project is like a child customer of a customer. And so you need to do things in this code. Like it's not a typo that we're searching the customers module for projects here. Like it's just basically a type of customer, um, which can make things a little tricky when you're like trying to search and find um, because you can't just like what you normally do is just search for a customer on email address and then kind of look through related things. But anyways, 
this should be useful. It, again, we kind of had to bang our head into this one to get it to work. Um, so we thought it'd be a good one to share just so that a future person doesn't have to go through the the pain and suffering the here to figure out. Right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Shout out to Eddie on this one. Nice job, Eddie. And if you don't know, Tyler talked about it earlier, but uh, Club Zanata um, is our online uh, community. All we require is your email and you can join. And it basically is where other like-minded uh, Zoholics are there, just basically just talking about Zoho, helping each other out. Um, it's also where you can ask us questions that we'll answer in Azaz, video requests that you'd like to see done for our YouTube channel. Um, so please check it out. Head over to club.sonata.com. And with that, let's go over to zanata.com and see what's happening over there. Well, Tyler, speaking of API integrations and doing such things, uh, we have an article on basically the things you need to know before you're going to start doing a third-party API integration. So really, this is yep. just think of this as your checklist for everything that you will want to have at your disposal or know what you're doing before you actually go into it. So what's your authentication uh credentials, your API keys, where you're going to get them, data flow, which direction is it flowing, um, basically all of the various things you need to integrate with Zoho. So a quick little article. It also references quite a few of our little resources around this as well. So uh, yeah, and one of the big out. things here is all the way up at the top, the first thing it asks is, is there public API documentation? I always just like to mention this, and I, I talk to prospects about this is when a, a software company makes their API public, it means they are confident in it, right? It is a marketing tool to have a good API, right? right? Because people like me and you will go and evaluate these things and then recommend them or not recommend them accordingly. So when somebody hides their API documentation behind a login that you can only get to once you've paid, it's a red flag right off the gate. Now, occasionally they do it because it's super private. It's a really special sauce tool. Okay. There are extenuating circumstances where it makes sense. But if you're thinking about purchasing a new piece of software and integrating it with Zoho, if you're having a hard time getting that documentation from them, that is red flag number one, because it means they don't think it's good because otherwise they'd put it out there because it's a marketing right. tool, right? Like having a good API sells products. So I always just like to highlight that when we're talking about integrations, where when I do that Google search and it comes up and they're just got everything documents like, cool, they're confident in this that they want you to find this documentation. And if they're hiding it, it can sometimes mean that they're not super proud of the API that they offer. Yep. All right. I mean, that is oftentimes the thing, right? You're sitting there talking to someone and they ask you, hey, we want to integrate with this. And I know exactly what you're saying. So you go, oh, I've never heard of that one before. And you go over there and, yep. you know, well, they don't really say. <laughs> so yep. you are going to have to find out. <laughs> Uh, all right. And now let's head over to YouTube and check out our tip of the week. So Tyler, are you just refusing to let anybody make uh, tips anymore? You're just monopolizing the entire tip. I've actually got some coming from, uh, from one from Greg and one from Josh coming soon here. Um, honestly, it's just Freddie's made it so easy with all the backend tools to record these things nowadays that it's like, you know, a call gets canceled. I've got 30 minutes. It's all it takes at this point because I can just, you know, spin up and go. So this quick video on setting up taxes inside of Zoho Books. Um, recently, we did partner up with Avalara to kind of be one of their choice partners for Zoho implementation. But um, Zoho Books can calculate taxes for you natively if you set them up. Um, so I kind of go through it in this video. Really, the takeaways are what I kind of learned in preparing for this video and then in recording it is that if you're selling in like multiple states, cities, counties, like just get Avalara. Um, it's going to require yep. a lot of setup. Like you can do it, but you know, the you might have like a, a federal sales tax a state sales tax, and then like a city or county levied sales tax on top of that. And so right. even if you were just selling in like Ohio, you might be paying different taxes for Cincinnati, Dayton, um, Columbus, right? Like the, they could all be different. Um, so yeah. 
yeah, it's it's tricky. It's one of those things where I think the tipping point where it makes sense to get Avalara rather than dealing with this manually comes pretty quick um, because it's a lot of work to do this right um, when you're using the native tools. And that's not really a knock on Zoho. It's just taxes are complicated, right? Yes. It's, not, it's not easy to well, do. Every city can do it. Um, I mean, a lot of people don't realize, but sales tax are basically one of the things that cities use to fund themselves and to do various things, right? And, yep. and they often allocate certain percentages of it and it changes all the time. I remember I was doing some work with uh, the city of Allen, Texas, and they had a half a percent sales tax added on um, to their tax and the other, but it was specifically designated for uh, business development, bringing businesses into Allen, Texas, right? That was yep. it <laughs> and, and helping them and helping them do that. So it's one of those things where um, it's so complicated and you're never going to know. And it can be different know. based on the type of item, right? So on the right. back end, like all different items basically get classified into these like general tax categories. And there are many of them. Um, <laughs> it's yes. not just like goods and services. There are many of them. And so different places might charge different incremental taxes on specific tax code allocated items on top of that. So if you have like a pretty wide product catalog that you sell into multiple states, you could easily have like hundreds of tax rates that are all stacking right. on top of each other and that need to be allocated. So yeah, I went through, kind of set up a couple basic examples, showed tax groups as well that kind of make things easier, you know, but it's yep. it's still just a lot of work versus turning on Avalara and saying, I'm done. Um, it'll just do it all for me. Absolutely. All right. And if you don't know, if you head over to youtube.com slash Sonata, uh, that is where we keep all of our videos. Uh, not only the ones that all the tip videos, the question videos, the uh, Q&A videos, the CRM Zen show, all of our webinars. Everything ends up over on our YouTube channel. So we would love it if you would head on over there, like and subscribe, um, and uh, check it out. We're most likely, we're up to 678 videos. Most likely, we have a video that will answer whatever is oval question it is you're looking for. So, all right, Tyler. Well, another show is in the bag. Yeah, there it is. Headed off to the long weekend here. See some fireworks. Feel very American for the next couple of days here before we yes. get back to work. It should be good. I'm jumping on a plane here and going into a nice little 30 minute flight into John Wayne airport. <laughs> so that'll Very be nice. quick. Uh, yeah. And off we go. So, all right, everybody will have a great, I hope you had a, by the time you're listening to this, hope you had a great uh, holiday weekend. And as always, if you would like to talk to us over here at Zanata, please head over to Zanata.com and click on book a meeting. On the website is also where you'll find complete episodes of the show, as well as links to all the stories we discussed today. If you want that news delivered to your inbox every Monday morning, be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. And last but not least, we always appreciate when you like and subscribe here on YouTube, as well as your choice of podcast app. We'll see you next Friday. Take care, everybody.